The old covenant is established on the promise that Israel made to God. At the bottom of Mount Sinai, there they were when they said in Exodus 24, verse 7, we will obey everything. <laughs> the problem with that is that Israel could not remain faithful. Okay, this is why the writer of Hebrew quotes from the book of Jeremiah several times saying in Hebrews 8, verse 8 through 13. Let me read this to you. Hebrews 8, 8 through 13. It says, but God revealed the defect and limitation of the first covenant when he said to his people, look, the day will come, declares the Lord, when I will satisfy the people of Israel and Judah by giving them a new covenant. And it will be an entirely different covenant than the one I made with their fathers when I led them by my, by my hand out of Egypt, for they did not remain faithful to my covenant. So I rejected them, says the Lord God, for here is the covenant I will one day establish with the people of Israel. I will embed my laws within their thoughts and fasten them onto their hearts. I will be their loyal God and they will be my loyal people. And the result of this will be that everyone will know me as Lord. There will be no need at all to teach their fellow citizens or brothers by saying you should know the Lord Jehovah since everyone will know me inwardly from the most unlikely to the most distinguished for I will demonstrate my mercy to them and will forgive their evil de deeds and never remember again their sins. Last verse. This proves that by establishing this new covenant, the first is now obsolete. Friend, are you listening tonight? The first covenant is obsolete, ready to expire and about to disappear. So Hebrews, so the writer of Hebrews understands they were living in the overlapping of two ages. So the New Testament message of grace and this new covenant was starting to swallow up the old, but he was living in a moment where the two covenants were being mingled and people were coming out of that and stepping in to this new covenant. But the writer of Hebrews says the law is absolutely, the first covenant and the law is absolutely obsolete, ready to expire, fading away. Let's look at the highlights of that verse, okay? Number one, God found fault with the people's promise to keep the law. Secondly, the new covenant will be nothing like the one made with Israel. Hello, we better listen because most of our eschatology is built on the fact that we have a mingling of two covenants. We need to reject Darby's notion for rapture dispensational eschatology because the new covenant will be like not, will be nothing like the old covenant that was made with Israel. The cause? Because Israel could not remain faithful. In the, here's, here's number four. In the new covenant, God will put his ways into our hearts and minds. How? Through the Holy Ghost. Okay? Then, lastly, he will forgive them and he will remember their sins no more. This is the declaration of righteousness that we find in Romans chapter four. He says, he says how do you know you've heard the powerful declaration of righteousness over your life when he says, I will never hold your sins against you. So how do we know that we've heard the message of righteousness? You no longer identify with a sin consciousness because he will remember your sins no more. Oh, hallelujah. So what does God do differently in the new covenant? <laughs> Old covenant is established off of Israel's promise to remain faithful to God, right? And the new covenant, what does God do different? He rigs the whole thing. <laughs> Through Jesus, we become God's people. Through Jesus, we know God intimately. Through Jesus, God puts his desires in us. Through Jesus, our sin record has been eradicated. Through Jesus, we get a new heart and no sin. Oh, this is strong, man. I hope you're listening tonight. Through Jesus, you get a new heart and the complete removal of sin. Hear me, friend. We've got to get this revelation. So let's go back to Israel. There's 613 commands. Some carried with it the punishment of death, okay? That's a pretty good incentive to obey, that if you disobey this, you're going to be put to death. How did it go? I know I got this one right. Psalm 78, let's read it together. Psalm 78, I'm reading from the New Living. Psalm 78 verse 56 says, 
But they kept testing and rebelling against God Most High. They did not obey His laws. They turned back and were as faithless as their parents. They were as undependable as a crooked bow. They angered God by building shrines to other gods, that, that, and they made Him jealous with their idols. When God heard them, He was angry, and He completely rejected Israel. That's, that's how the Old Covenant went. Um, if you read the prophets, it's even worse than that. Not only could the people not be faithful to God, but if you read st stuff like Malachi even, you'll find out that even the priests couldn't remain faithful to God. So God knew the new covenant had to be established on a better hope based upon a better promise. Listen to this, friend, because this is where it gets good, and it looks like I'm probably going to end early tonight, but that's fine. I want you to go back and listen to this message over and over again until you get these truths down deep into your heart. So God knew the new covenant had to be established on a better hope. How? Because he made a better promise. Let's read Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17 through 19. Hebrews 6, 17 through 19. So in the same way, God wanted to end all doubt and confirm it even more forcefully to those who would inherit his promises. His purpose was unchangeable. So God added his vow to the promise. So it is impossible for God to lie, for we know that his promise and his vow will never change. And now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and comfort, for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time, an unshakable hope. We have this certain hope, like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat, which sits in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold and where Jesus, our forerunner, has gone in before us. He is now and forever our royal priest like Melchizedek. Wow. You ready? What keeps, what, what's the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant? The old covenant was, the, was based upon Israel's promise to God. The new covenant is based on two unchangeable things. God and God. <laughs> God and God. And I'm going to say something, and this is going to mess with some people tonight as you're watching this. I hope that you'll share this with friends because, man, some people have never heard this stuff and they need to hear the gospel. Listen, friend, your eternal security as it relates to salvation is based upon a promise that God made to himself concerning you. <laughs> God made a promise to himself that you would be saved by grace. God made a promise to himself that you would be a son and daughter of Almighty God and all of your sins would be forgiven past, present, and future. God made a promise to himself to make sure you stayed on the path, that you kept the grace of God at the center of your life. God made a promise to himself. You say, but Mark, there are plenty of people that got saved, but they backslid. Listen, friend, that means that they prayed a prayer, repeated a prayer at an altar, went through the religious motions. But if you ever get this revelation that God has made a promise to himself and you awaken to the grace of God, friend, there is no such thing as backsliding. There is no such thing as turning your back on God. You become a man awakened, fully alive to your identity as sons of God, the righteousness of God, full of the grace of God, obeying because you have a new heart with new desires causing you to obey the truth. Friend, this is the gospel. It's grace coming. It's, G it's God making a promise to himself through his son Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit to ensure you and I <laughs> stay in this new covenant. So the old covenant is based on what we can do for God. The new covenant is what God can do for man. 